Good morning. Welcome to you, and a big welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Good to have you with us. I invite you to send the Blue Friendship book down, put your name and other information there, and then uh, send it back to the center, if you would. There it goes like this. Uh, Pastor John is on vacation this week. We'll be back uh, this Tuesday. Also, uh, Melanie and I were in Fort Collins this weekend, I should say Friday, Saturday, for the wedding of Lauren Klein, daughter of Greg and Tracy Klein. Uh, often they are ushers at the 1030 service. Jacob, tell us what's happening in the next week or two. My name is Jacob. I serve in the areas of youth, family, and education. Uh, just a couple of announcements. The first one is Vacation Bible School. Uh, there's a bulletin insert, and we took up a whole page for that one. So there's quite a bit in there. Go ahead and take that um, uh, look over that real quick. Uh, there are registration packets in the fellowship hall. So if you have students that you think would uh, enjoy that, go ahead and register them. And then you can turn that into the front desk. Um, also, if you go to our website, and if you're joining us online, maybe go there now. If you go to our website and scroll down just a little bit, there's a link for our VBS. Click on that and it'll give a bunch of information as well. We also have what, what we call night camp, which is for our middle schoolers and our high schoolers, which is from 6.15 to 8.30, Sunday through Wednesday, while VBS is going. I got to talk to our uh, VBS coordinator and they're very excited for night camp as well. So this is uh, open for anyone that wants to join that. So invite your family, invite your friends. Also, we are going to be doing a new program during uh, the summer called Summer Wiggle. And so that is, that's Wiggle Worship, our Wiggle Worship program, but we're going to be doing this uh, through the summer as well. There are a couple of uh, spots where we can use some volunteers. So if you're interested, you can see Amy Churchill, who is our awesome Wiggle Worship coordinator, and you can see me after service as well. If you have any questions in the areas of youth, family, or education, you can also see me after service. Thanks. Thanks, Jacob. And for those of you who don't know about Wiggle Worship, that's during our, generally our second or later service, and uh, we're extending that during the summer during worship. This morning at 9.30, we have our new member class here in the sanctuary, joining Jesus on his mission class upstairs. Please also notice that the grief group will not meet this Wednesday, but will resume the following. Next week, I'm going to, I'm inviting you to wear red. Do you remember why? It's Pentecost Sunday, and so you're welcome to wear red. We also ask that you would wear your name tags. So that will be next week. Please notice that next week we go to our summer schedule. Please do not come at 8. If you'd like to come and pray outside, you're welcome. We now go to one service at 9 o'clock during the sun, uh, summer. Down in the bottom of that announcement page, you'll see that uh, summer worship schedule. Please notice the outdoor worship dates as uh, weather permits. Also, on the 17th, actually from the 17th to the 19th of June, that will be over the uh, Father's Day weekend, uh, our missionary to the Congo, uh, Didi Panzo, will be with us. We are hoping that Serafina can be also here, but remember she suffered a stroke. She's still doing her uh, physical therapy. It's taking quite a while, so we're not sure whether she will be well enough to travel, but she continues to be in our prayers. Those are the announcements. I invite you to turn to your red hymnals to the front, page 94, for the brief order of confession. Please stand and face the baptismal font. We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, 
Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. called to baptize we witness to grace and gather a people of each land and race in deep flowing water we share in Christ's death then rising to new life give thanks for each breath in Christ called to banquet front part of your hymnals, page 138. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this 
holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, our Savior, is with you in eternal glory. Give us faith to see the truth to his promise. He is among us still and will be with us to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children forward. And the hordes will be here next Sunday. Come on up. How's the arm, dude? <laughs> Hi, come on. Yeah, let's sit over here. Well, good morning. I'm going to sit down with you. I brought this with me. If you see me uh, walking around or going on a hike or something like that, you will almost always see me carrying this. You know what this is? What is it? A water bottle. Very good. Yeah, so I take this when I go hiking, and I take this with me pretty much whenever I leave the house. There was one time where I went for a hike, and I forgot this. But I thought, you know, not that big of a deal, it'll be okay. So I get to walking, and the clouds part, and the sun, although beautiful, is shining very bright upon me. And so I keep walking, and it's getting hotter and hotter, and I'm getting more and more thirsty. Well, what happens when you get really, really thirsty? Well, I get kind of upset. <laughs> but I also get tired, and at that point, I was pretty far, and I even got a little bit afraid. So when I finally got back to my vehicle, I stopped somewhere and I got a drink. How do you think I felt after I was drinking some nice cold water? Yeah, nice, cool and refreshed, comfortable, less afraid, very good, very good. So in one of our readings, we're gonna hear that just as our mom or our dad or our grandpa or our grandma gives us water when we're outside and we're playing and we're hot to comfort and soothe us and even to give us peace of mind. That's what Jesus offers us. Jesus offers us comfort and peace and he's there for us. He loves us very, very much. So maybe sometime this week or this summer when you're out of school and you're uh, enjoying playing outside and you take a big drink of water, maybe take a second to thank the Lord too. Think we can do that? Think we can do that? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for mom and for dad. Thank you for grandpa and grandma. Thank you for nice, cool, refreshing drink of water on a hot summer's day. Thank you most that you are there to comfort us and that you love us. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. First reading this morning is from Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. 
They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful to us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, <clears throat> Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds, and then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. <clears throat> the second lesson is from Revelation chapter 22. See, I am coming. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let everyone who hears say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming too. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Hear the Gospel according to John chapter 17. Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
Please be seated. We call the reading we've just heard a part of Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's not always the easiest to follow. But the main point is Jesus is saying that the world may know. We hear Jesus praying for us, you and me. On the one hand, he says, I ask not only on behalf of these, who do you think these are? It's the disciples, the twelve. But also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. And so now Jesus is praying for you. For those who will believe because of the disciples' word. Who is it that Jesus is praying for? Us. And what is it that he is praying for us? In the previous verses, he's praying for our protection. Protect them from the evil one. As our thoughts go to Uvala, Texas, and the children and the families and all who grieve, protect them from the evil one. And then now in this part, I pray for them and their witness that the world might believe that you sent me, Jesus says. So Jesus prays that his love might be on us just as the Father loved Jesus and Jesus loves us now that our love can spread toward others and maybe that we might be filled with him and then overflow in the life of others. That the world know Jesus. We continue to hear about the fact that Jesus is on the loose. He is raised from the dead. He is out there. He is in your homes, in your neighbor's home, in the car, in the store. Wherever there is someone who is hurting, there is Jesus. And he invites us, come join me, speak a word of encouragement or welcome, notice a need, respond. And then Jesus said, I will do all the hard work. We see an example of this in our first lesson. I invite you to look at that. It's lengthy, a powerful story. We see what happens in that first lesson with Paul and Silas and how God is at work. He already knows somebody is in trouble. He already knows there is someone who will take their life unless. And see what happens with this jailer. The first part we heard last week. We heard that Paul had a vision. Someone said, come help us. And he goes to uh, the town of Philippi, which is in Macedonia. Think upper uh, Greece to the right. Paul and Silas on a mission journey there. It is their practice to seek out Jewish places of worship called synagogues. In this case, it was probably the case that there wasn't a specific gathering of Jews, literally synagogue. And so he looked for a place of prayer where Jewish people would be gathered for prayer. He found one outside the city proper, on the other side of the river. And there he met some women. One of the women's name was Lydia. Remember you heard this last week? Her job was what? A dealer in purple, which made her rather comfortable and she probably had a large house. She listened intently to what Paul and Silas were saying about Jesus and then she and her household were baptized as believers in Jesus. And then she said, if I have proved myself worthy, come and stay at my home, at my house. And we hear that she prevailed upon them and so they came, probably a house with Lot, lot of room and she could use guests or have guests. So today now we hear once again in that first part of the lesson 
on our way to the place of prayer. Same place in Philippi, where Lydia is. They're on the way to that same place of prayer across the river. Paul and Silas encounter a girl. She has a spirit. It, it's not a good spirit, but she has the spirit of divination. She can tell the future. She can tell people's fortunes. And she is owned by a couple people who are making a great deal of money off of her. She begins to follow them. And as she follows them, she cries out in a loud voice, These men are servants of the Most High God. They proclaim to you a way of salvation. I figure, what a great thing. Free advertising. And so anybody who wants to hear something about salvation, they're going to hear about Jesus. Sounds good to me. The problem is she continues to follow, she continues to cry out, and she is doing this for numerous days. If you are Paul, how are you going to start to feel? As the author says, very much annoyed. And so when he has it up to here, he turns to the young girl, he speaks to the spirit and says, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And out it comes. And now this little girl can be a little girl again. She doesn't have to be possessed. She doesn't have to be working for someone else. She doesn't have to be tied to them. She can now be freed just to be a little girl. But there's a problem. Who responds? The owners. The owners are furious because their way of making a living has just disappeared. And so they seize Paul and Silas, they drag them to the marketplace, and they bring them before the authorities. They accuse them of stirring up the people and causing the people or teaching them to do things that Romans aren't supposed to do, whatever that means. So then they are ordered to be stripped of their clothing and flogged or beaten with rods. Now I have never, well I was flogged twice by my father, but other than the belt, I have never been beaten with sticks. Whenever I've heard about that, I thought, well, how bad can that be? You know, what's a stick? Do know that the word here for rod is exactly the same word used in Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me loud in green pastures. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I have no fear for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. The rod is something to protect the sheep, something that can be used quite well. This is not simply a stick. This is a stout rod. I would not want to be hit by one of those once. And yet we hear that Paul and Silas received a severe beating. In another time later, on his missionary journey, Paul will be beaten so much that he is dragged from the city and left for dead. Severely beaten, Paul and Silas are now thrown in prison. The jailer is ordered to keep them secure. So now, with their backs and legs and arms wounded, bruised, they are put in the prison. And the jailer hears his assignment well, and he puts them in the innermost cell, the darkest cell, the most secure cell. And he does one more thing. Did you catch it? Stop. He puts their feet in the stocks. Do you remember last week we talked about the tree of life? The Greek word used for tree is also used for wood. It also just happens to be used for the stocks. They're wood. Same word used for all of those things. Their feet are put in the stocks. So they are lying there on their bruised and wounded backs. 
in the darkness. The jailer knows these two are not escaping. But you heard the rest of the story. In the darkness, what is it that Paul and Silas are doing? Are they depressed? Are they dejected? Are they hanging their heads? What is it? They are praying. And they're doing one other thing. They're singing. And are they singing dirges? No, they are singing hymns. And the prisoners, other prisoners, are hearing their witness. My hunch is they are singing hymns of deliverance. Hymns of praise of a God who hears and comes to help and rescues. And there in the darkness, in the innermost cell, as they are hurting and bleeding, they are singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners hear them. Something happens at midnight, an earthquake, a seismic activity. It is so strong that the very foundations of that building are shaken. And the doors swing open and the chains and shackles and even the stocks are released. The jailer wakes up, and what does he see? Doors opened. What does he think? Everyone has escaped. You need to know that during this time, a jailer was entrusted with the security of the prisoners. And if they escape, what's the penalty for the jailer? It's at least the punishment that each of them would receive, if not death. The jailer, knowing that the prisoners have escaped, or thinking it, now takes his sword and is about to kill himself when, what does he hear? He hears a voice out of the darkness. Don't harm yourself. We're all here. It's Paul. The jailer simply hears a voice in his deepest need. Someone speaks. A human being speaks. And it's words of good news, words of relief, words of hope. Pause just a minute. Often we never know what the need is of those that we encounter. Someone in church. Someone we might greet during the sharing of the peace. We don't know what kinds of hurts or fears or anxiety they're experiencing. But often a word of welcome, a word of assurance, encouragement, can make a huge difference. Hearing the voice of another simply addressing us. The jailer hears a voice. Don't harm yourself. We're all here. And so the next thing the jailer does is what? He calls for a light. And so think of some kind of lamp. And they bring it to that inmost cell, and there he sees Paul and Silas, all the chains gone, but they are still there. And trembling, he falls to the ground before them and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now that's a good question. What must I do to be saved? And Paul simply says, well, believe on the Lord Jesus. And you and your whole household shall be saved. What's interesting to me is so far, Paul and Silas have done no great deeds. They have simply spoken, what, eight words. Do not hurt yourself. We are all still here. That's it. And it saves a man's life. Now, he is, the, the jailer says, what must I do to be saved? And they simply say, turn to Jesus. How hard is that? Little steps, little things, a bit of hope. The man, the jailer, hears 
Turn to Jesus. And my guess is, at, he starts listening to Paul and Silas as they speak the word of the Lord to him. What do you think they said? Well, this is Jesus who is the Son of God. This is Jesus who gave his life for you. This is Jesus who loves you in spite of yourself and doesn't wait for you to shape up and become this perfect person, but actually he comes to you and bears on his shoulders all your struggles, all your sin, and through the cross forgives you. That's not particularly hard theological talk. That's just straightforward message. This is Jesus who saves and forgives and heals. This is Jesus who knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples. This is the one who sets us free, makes us new. And did you notice now what the jailer does? Look in your reading. What is it that he does? What is it? He washes their wounds. In hearing about Jesus and having heard that his life is already saved, he will not be killed because the prisoners escaped because they simply sat there. By the way, if you were the prisoner and heard the jailer come and be drawing his sword and, and saying, oh, I'm going to have to kill myself, what would you do? I think I would just sit there quietly hoping he'd get it done quickly so I could escape. But not Paul and Silas. They care too much. And all along, God knows this jailer could take his life, and all he needs is a voice. The jailer now bends down and begins to wash their backs and their arms, and their legs, and all these bleeding wounds that they have received. He hasn't helped much either before, slamming them in the stocks. But now the jailer, having met Jesus, and having heard what Jesus does, begins to look like Jesus and do what Jesus does. He washes the wounds carefully. The love of the Lord that the jailer received from Paul, don't harm yourself, we're all here. He now expresses in washing the wounds and he himself becomes a little more like Jesus. It's what God is doing it's what Jesus is on the loose doing. He knows who is hurting. In many ways, that's each of us. And he is with each of us, whether we know him or not, whether your neighbor knows him or not, Jesus is out to heal and to restore. And every once in a while, we get to help. The jailer hears about Jesus. He loves us even at our worst. And his love transforms us. And after he washes their wounds, he himself is washed. How? In baptism. He and his entire family. I have a hunch this is a young man. One would think a jailer would like to move up in life. And if they do a good job in jailing, they can probably have a better job. He has a family, he has a whole household, perhaps even young ones. And because of his listening, all of them are baptized. Then he brings these prisoners, Paul and Silas, up to his own house. It's probably up on the second floor. He treats them as honored guests. He sits them down at his table and he feeds them. 
and the entire household rejoices that he has become a believer. Melanie and I were just talking about this last evening and she mentioned, imagine how tragic the story could have been for his family. No father, no husband. And yet Paul and Silas simply were a voice. Don't harm yourself, we're all here. And not only is he saved from death, but he comes to know Jesus Christ. And now he can really live. Our Lord is at work in this world in every single person's life. He cares for each. No matter who you meet, no matter who you know, across the street, across the aisle, at home or at work or at school. Each person he loves. And he is working to redeem and make whole. And he invites us to join him. Paul and Silas, he made use of. They just did a few small things. They noticed a need. They gave some hope. Don't harm yourself, we're here. They saw the darkness. Ah, and then they brought light, didn't they? He brought light to see them, but later, how shall I be saved? And they talk to him about Jesus, and they bring Jesus' light to him. They do some small things, and Jesus does all the big work. It's how he wants to use you and me. Noticing a need, giving a little hope, bringing a little light. Small things. And why? So that the world may know him. Amen. Signs of your kingdom.
Please turn to the front of your hymnals, page 105. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being a part of your healing and redeeming work in the world. And it isn't often huge things. Often it's a little hope, a little light, a little encouragement to be a voice. Thank you for your compassion that you would want every person, the world, to know you. Give us open ears and open eyes to the needs of others. And then move us to do or say that which can be a little bit of help so that you may do the great work of making them your own. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our broken world, for the Ukraine, for Russia, for countless places where people are hurting, homeless, afraid, in danger. We picture your arms loving, giving, healing, reaching out to all. We particularly pray for those in Texas, for those who grieve, those who are angry, those who are frightened. We pray that your hand may rest upon all who are injured, all who are grieving so deeply to give healing that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our missionary Didi Panzo, his wife Serafina, as they continue to care for those in the Congo of Africa. Lord, we pray that you would keep your hand of healing upon Serafina to restore the connection between her mind and her muscles, that she may be walking and moving her arm well. Lord, in your mercy. And for those in our midst, we pray, for Lynn and Sadie, Deanna, Jane, Haldi, Keith, Dave, Jan, Duane, Josh, and for those we mention silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with one another.
The offering prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, he is the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all the creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. And thinking of that jailer, what does the Hebrew word Hosanna mean? Say it. Say it. Save us. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy, eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have life eternal. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. The body of Christ, broken for you. As you come to the Lord's table, I invite you to form two lines. Take a glass, come to the rail, kneel or stand as you are able. When you are finished, place your empty glass in a basket and return to your place. Please be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.